morning, fans of Privateer FX. Coming at you on the Friday, Jackson Hole Day, we're finally here. Seemed like an eternity this week. We do have retail sales in Canada today, also to go with Jackson Hole. So there'll be a little bit of volatility in Canada um, before we get this 4 o'clock Fed chairman speech. Let's go over these charts a little bit. It's not super useful uh, um, to set your plan in stone here. You need to wait till about two, 2 hours before to see where price is before you make any uh, real micro adjustments to your plans but it's a good idea to see what's going on so let's just go over a couple of things first chart we're going to look at is this dollar yen um, this sucker is going to move today if he's hawkish this is your horse um, I have no idea what is going on here at 70 but uh, between 65 and 70 we've just had a uh, cluster of offers holding this thing down every time up here bang 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 four five hourly bars decent turns 20 30 points lower and now back um, if he's hawkish this is your horse some people are gonna wait for 80 to break um, that was that shock high on that uh, morning open on the 15th of August those of you uh, who trade in Europe will remember it the mysterious move up in dollar yen some blame the CME uh, I just think it was FX being FX we were all short that morning um, key to all of this will be how things go at 107 but because this is um, Jackson Hole and Powell you can get long early so if you if you see a hawkish tilt towards this or in effect less dovish jump on board uh, dollar yen dollar yen north if he's hawkish let's take a look at this euro dollar did not like going up yesterday at all got up to 13 after the PMI beats and then was just a dog all day did not go up well could not go up well it was it just can't can't go right very well at all now we have a double top here triple bottom down here it looks like this 60 is gonna break uh, in Europe the years low 28 People who traded ECB will remember this 60 level. It was a real not a real ball breaker going back up through 60. There was tons of supply at 110.60 on the way back up. So if you remember, we cleared uh, 110.54, and then it was just apeshit volume on the sell side at 110.60. You know, because markets remember these things. Um, I expect, and there has been obviously some some just sticky bullshit here at 60 again on the way back down. But once we clear 60, um, there should be some clear sailing down to 30. Uh, we will not be break trading this um, this morning. We're just going to stand down uh, trading until till Powell uh, gets back in. Uh, stand down with new trades. We have to manage some of our other stuff. Uh, speaking of managing, let's look at cable. Uh, if you're long cable, I suggest you turn it into euro sterling to avoid having dollar um, exposure going into um, FOMC. So if you're if you're long cable, just sell some euros against it. Uh, obviously, through 80 yesterday paid went up to uh, 71 you can just buy through the highs again if it's a weak one um, cable could be your horse on a dovish fed but if you're long cable now in case he's hawkish 
you want you don't you don't want a dollar exposure. Let's take a look at Euro Sterling. Obviously, ninety ninety paid. Um, we went down to twenty nine, I believe. Yep, twenty nine. Now we're back at fifty. Uh, you can just sell rallies on this anywhere between 80 and 20 there'll be congestion should hold gonna be choppy gonna be news driven it's hard to believe that Boris Johnson's the guy who just pushed all the chips into the table into the center of the table and said listen we gotta renegotiate this as it looks now it looks like Europe's gonna fold like a house of cards they may be worried about the impact on Germany who already has a weak manufacturing sector. A lot of cars are sold in the UK. You don't, not sure they want tariffs on those cars. I don't know. Um, just uh, We're just trading the charts on this stuff because it's too hard to trade. There's no logic behind uh, any of this crap. Um, so for now, we're short Euro Sterling. We're not going to marry this. We'll be disciplined with our stops. Um, but core short is the way you can add up here between 80 and 20 you've got to kill this thing um, around 22 91 22 what else is out there it's good as stocks roller coaster ride yesterday We literally sold 39.75s yesterday, which was crazy, the exact high, but we got spooked out of it um, like amateurs. Uh, and we made a couple of handles on it, and then we took them back at 34, um, which was a shame because that um, we printed that 39.75 high. We went basically straight down to 06. Should have profited more uh, from that, but it was a botch. Now we're back at 32, which is going to be very painful for a lot of people. We still stand by our um, our belief that this is a trap break. So 44 and a quarter is going to break. 60 is going to hold. So anywhere between 44 and a quarter and 60, you want to get short. Um, so if he's dovish or not hawkish. This will float higher. There's definitely going to be stops above 40 and then above 44. You want these stops to be taken out, and then you, uh, you we're going to be getting on the short side. Uh, and then we'll just manage it through the mess. Um, that is going to be Jackson Hole. But that was quite a wild bar yesterday. Some people said it was two tens inversion. Some people said it was Powell uh, tone from from a couple of Fed speakers George was on she was obviously she's a she's a hawk she was obviously somewhat hawkish could be the turn in fixed income uh, that drop that made this drop hard to say but we're back now um, massive screw job as always in S&P's uh, we'll see what happens but our plan is uh, to get short between 44 and 60 uh, Let's go to Boone's. Bobby here. <laughs> Crazy town down to 177.63. Uh, this caught a lot of people by surprise. We were surprised as well. You know, we opened up uh, at 80 straight down, and as it was collapsing, lower euro and euro yen would not go higher, which was weird. Um, and this could mean a lot of different things. One of the things it could mean are people are abandoning European fixed income and, and moving those positions into U.S. dollar fixed income. My real money friends all think this is happening. Uh, and if this is happening, that makes that makes sense. Lower boond, lower euro. So they're selling out of boons, which is a euro-based instrument, and they're buying um, U.S. fixed income. Where they're buying it in U.S. on the U.S. side, I don't know because tens also got smashed. Um, One thirty oh two now, so it wasn't like we saw massive buying on U.S. tens. I 
again, I, I don't really know. Uh, it's hard to explain, or it's a little. It's easy to explain in hindsight what the hell is going on, and it's hard to explain while it's happening. Um, and it was very hard yesterday, especially because we were long euros for most of the day. Um, finally, had to just give up uh, after the fix. You still saw this thing go left. It was just a pain in the ass. Um, anyway, Boone's have they turned well, it would have been nice to close below 80 but we're at 83 now I'm going to go out on a limb and say they have turned and if he's hawkish today which of course the US bond market is kind of pre-positioning for a little bit more of a hawkish Jackson Hole this could be a very sexy horse as could ZN US 10s if he's hawkish this is so stretched so insane both boons and 10 years um, that it'll be a waterfall lower if he's hawkish so one of the things you can do is just say where's the puke point on this for me 129.14 will begin will begin the puke um, and if we get down to 129.14 you're pretty well sure that he was hawkish so perhaps uh, a momentum, a layered momentum type job through 14, have a 14 entry if done, offer 17s, if you want to be aggressive hit 07s, you want to get your average right around 129.14, um, could be interesting if he's hawkish, Boons will just follow in sympathy, um, you saw the Bundesbank come out yesterday and say there's no need for stimulus. Of course, the Bundesbank is the Bundesbank. They're not the ECB. Um, they're not as powerful as they used to be. But, God forbid, the ECB doesn't deliver some massive easing plan um, in September. This thing's going to crater as well. Anyway, food for thought, uh, fixed income if he's hawkish, dollar yen if he's hawkish, that's exactly the same trade. So whatever you're more comfortable with. For those of you who just trade FX, um, I would just stick to the FX. Fixed income is, is very tricky to trade. Uh, I'm personally not great at it, so I'll be sticking to the FX side of this. I'll probably have a little fixed income on just for amusement's sake. But um, that's your hawkish side. And if he's dovish, we like cable higher. Um, and I'm not sure. I guess, you know, EM is, would be your secondary horse if it's really dove. Maybe dollars are. Um, or maybe Aussie higher. But let's see. You really have to see where things are. Obviously, if dollar ends at 107 this afternoon already, it's less of a good horse, you know, if if we've if Dalian's gone up fifty, sixty points, et cetera, et cetera. Same thing if Boons and, and Bonds have, have collapsed a point already. You know, you've got to rethink where things are. So basically, uh, my advice is sit tight. I'm gonna get some exercise this morning, take a long nap this afternoon and uh get ready to rumble for four o'clock. Um and see what happens. Good luck out there, people. Uh, enjoy the weekend after Jackson Hole is over, and I will see you on Monday. Ciao.